same results. <laughs> you can't get the same result when all the variables have changed. Amen? And I'm glad you brought that up. Sister Morton had what I call a perfect storm. And God allows you to have it every now and then. He can't give it to you too much because it'll go to your head. But every now and then, he says, you know what? This is right. This is right. This is right. Let me bless her. That's what happened. That's not what we're talking about out here. We need a level of consistency. We need to be consistent. When you don't get your baptismal goal, it usually related to you not getting your second goal, which is usually not related to you getting your first goal. So that means a lot of times the results we get is based on us not doing what we said we would do. If we agreed to 400, that's what we're going to do. And so when we come to the, uh, the, the narrative, this is what we say. Lord, I didn't do the 400. And I didn't do the 50, but I still want you to give me my baptismal goal. It, it works better that when you talk to the Lord, you are in the position of being honest with him. <laughs> oh, y'all missed that. And that's how come you have to be very careful about what you say you're going to do. Because God hears what you're going to do, and when you don't do it, you, you, you're not coming to the Lord, I believe, with a full deck. Amen? If you say you're going to do 10, do 10. If you say you're going to work four hours a day, do four hours a day. That's not three and a half. And here's the tragedy of it. We don't do that on secular jobs. It got quiet. This whole section over here got quiet then. When the man say you work eight hours, you will work eight hours. Amen? If he says you work certain days, you work certain days. And you put the time in and therefore, but see, God don't work with us like that. He says, listen, you tell me what you're going to do. And we have a trouble doing what we say we're going to do. And then we want God's full blessings. We got to know that, yeah, God will bless you even with our faultiness. I got that. But I love to go to him when I have done what I said I'm going to do. i say it like that. Uh, I've got two brothers. I want them to come up. We're going to hold a mic to their, to their, uh, their, their uh, mic to their mouth. As they come. We're going to run through a couple examples for us. And then we're going to turn this back over to Pastor Lewis. Pastor Lewis, I just want to tell you, uh, as, as the leader of South Central Conference, evangelism and church plan I thank you for this we need we need this I don't care what people think we need to be retuned rekindled I don't care what degrees you've had in here I don't care how how many souls you want this helps all of us as we work to train others work to learn and work to harness it so that God will use us in these awesome but evil days amen, amen. listen uh this is Daryl Monk. Somebody say amen. He lives somewhere up in middle Tennessee or West Tennessee. West Tennessee. West Tennessee. Lord, I don't know where it is. It's out there in the middle of nowhere <laughs> near Jackson, Mississippi. Slide over more toward the middle, my brother. Right there. Come on over a little bit. Um, let me see how I can say this without tearing up. When it came to me learning about this thing called pre-work, this was my teacher. And I'm happy he's here today. He trained me in Knoxville, Tennessee. And, and Elder, you know how Knoxville, Tennessee is a book of band. And he trained me, took me out in Western Heights and uh, some of the I mean, some of the huge projects I think I ever worked in, some of the doors, and he took his time with me. We're different. We made a good team for a long time. Uh, I was always ready to leave. I would say to him, she ain't doing nothing. We sit here wasting, she's not doing, and he said, Brother Miller, hang on in there just a little bit longer with us. And that's what made us the perfect team. You got to have a perfect partner. 
Did you hear what I said? You have to have a good partner. I don't wait because that's just the way I am. And he wait too long. <laughs> and so I would have to drag him out of the house. I said, man, she ain't going to do nothing. Somebody say amen. But uh, I am so thankful that he is here. He's recently retired, and he's saying, Lord, I, I want to get back into the work. He was an original member of uh, the Real Truth Ministries team from the very beginning, going some 20, some 20, 25 years ago, and he's still here alive and kicking. Amen? Amen. On this side is my brother. He is a beautiful young man. Uh, when I went to my first district in Vicksburg, Mississippi, he came into my community. Uh, he, he came under my net, and we captured him as a, as a member of the Vicksburg, Mississippi church. Amen? He, he uh, got out in the field, started winning souls for Christ, and um, he was uh, halfway in the church and halfway out the church. Amen? He wasn't, he was like Peter. He, he, nobody reminds me of Peter like he does. He wasn't converted yet. Amen? But he, he, he got himself together, thank God, and God placed us back together, Brother Paul Garrett. And uh, now he's winning souls. He works every year. This year, the Lord blessed them with 59 precious souls. Come on, come on, put your hands together. All, all of them were under the pandemic, by the way. The pandemic didn't, didn't, didn't cut off while he was doing that. Yeah, yes. And we thank God for him and the protection. He recently married. He married uh, Sister Hattie Garrett, uh, who, when I went to another city, we baptized her. Amen. I never, I, if, I, if I knew these two were going to get, let, let me leave that alone. But anyway, Brother Jerry Lewis, which is the brother of Tim Lewis, baptized her. Amen. What am I saying? When you throw the rock into the river, when you throw the rock into the lake, you don't know where the ripples run. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. There's a, there's a connection with Sister Morton and Tim Lee. Somebody say amen. They know how. And he's in the truth and has been a, and has been a fireball. The connections are there. When we win souls, we don't know where they go. There are now ministers in there, full-time preachers that are out there, and so God is blessing. But listen, gentlemen, um, you, I'm going to let you, you're going to be the person at the house. My brother, he's going to knock on the door, and I want you to find out if he's done his lesson, okay? And how, and how would, and, and, and uh, you, you, you can carry it a couple of different ways. You, you come on this side. You see that X down there? Yeah, you've been in, you've been in the movies. You see that down there? Yeah. Yeah, you, you knock on the door. Give him your canvas, and then, then uh, see, where, see where he goes. Okay, this is the second time I'm coming back. To this is the, this, this the first time. Let's start the first time. Let's start the first, the first time. time. This is the first visit. Okay, so. Hey, brother, how you doing? You remember me from last week? Uh, <laughs> You're a little nervous, aren't you? You're a little no, nervous. No, no, this is the first saying. week. This is the very first time you go oh, into I'm the door. Giving the lesson. Yeah, yeah, you give it the door. Okay, okay, okay. 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 So I'm coming, I'm You're, you're a little nervous. Person. That's okay. okay. I That's got okay. It now. I got okay. It. okay. So knock on the door. How you doing? My name is Elder Garrow. I'm in the neighborhood giving out some Bible survey. Here's yours today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, I've never taken a survey like this. All it is is just a simple true and false questionnaire. All you have to do is just read it, circle true and false, and I'm going to come back next week and pick it up. Okay, I can do that. What's your name? My name is John Lewis. Okay, John Lewis, I'll see you next week. <laughs> okay, John Lewis. Okay, you can't, you can't, John Lewis, okay. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Listen, this time I don't want you to, uh, to be as nice as you were, but don't be ugly. Okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't don't be ugly, but don't be nice. Okay. You trying to get me ripped up, okay? No, no, I'm not. Okay, okay. So we doing the same time. I'm yeah. coming in first. Okay. Hello, who is it? This is Elder Garrett. Oh, hey, how you doing, Elder Garrett? How you doing, brother? Listen, we're in the neighborhood giving out Bibles questionnaire today, and I'd like to leave one with you. 
uh, when, you know, I'm kind of busy. Uh, I don't know if I really, I'm not really not interested. Okay, this, this, uh, just want to leave it with you. All you have to do is just circle true and false. I'm going to come back next week and pick it up. Oh, okay, okay you come back next week. I'll try, try to feel that for you. Okay. Then. What's your name, by the way? Uh, name is John Lewis. Okay, John Lewis. <laughs> Okay, John Lewis. All right, we're gonna go with that. Okay, all right. Listen, um, let me let me get some. Um, and I'm I'm always nervous about this here, but let me get some uh, some good criticism. Anybody? What do you what 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 would you do differently? Let's do it like that. Now, of course, he's a he's a strong man. Uh, he's won many souls, but if you was to do it, what would you do a little different? I know, Sister Charles, you're going to say something. Okay. <laughs> okay, Brother Lewis. Okay, all right. All right. Th that's, that's good, but, but uh, if you look at this here, um, is it on here? It is on there. Oh, okay, let me. I apologize. I don't say that no more. So, I, yeah, I, okay. I don't even. I don't say because again, very little of what you say, they remember it. You know, so it's important to us though. That's what you got to realize. That's the difference. Sometimes when we go to a house, we we trying to get what's important to us, not realizing that with the people that's listening to you, it, it can be hit and miss. So you want to be very careful about what you say. If you say that, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I thought, they, did I see your hand, Jeffrey? <laughs> Jeffrey, I like you. I like Jeffrey. Yeah, no, you, you did give a little option. Yeah, you, you want to stay away from, wanna stay away from the, the option. Because uh, if they don't want it, they're not going to take it no matter what you, wh however way you present it. Uh, but we're trying to get we're trying to get people who kind of halfway to just go ahead on and put up with you, because that's exactly what he did. He wasn't happy about taking it at all. Amen. And one other thing I want to add is the fact that you you think in terms of your time consuming, yeah. And you don't want to keep the people at the door a long time, right. so that's why a lot of times. Oh, okay. Sure. okay. I, I know Elder Charles. Okay, well, let's go ahead. didn't have any reference to the ministry and people took issue with that they said we don't know who the heck you are and why should I give you any information and why should I take this survey okay 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 all right listen when it when when you were in different places different things come up um, when, when you in different cities and a lot of things are happening people are more suspect so you do have to and you have, to, and that's again is the work of a Bible instructor. You need to know what you need to do in that particular area. Some places have no knock laws and all kind of stuff. You have to learn how to manipulate around that. Do you understand what I'm saying? This right here is generic, and I think I cleared that up. This is a, this is just skeletons. You put on this based on the community where you are. I saw your hand, preacher, and then I see your hand. I see your hand, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a nightmare. They're paying attention. Right, right, yeah. Because I, I took somebody out in somewhere in lower Mississippi. We got back to the car. He had 40 names and no addresses. And, uh, and he didn't need, and I said, well, you should have got it. He said, okay, I'll get it next time. Next time? What about the 40 you already got and don't have no earthly way of getting back to them? You can't even get back to them today and you just left them. And I learned, boy, don't take nothing for granted. You got to make sure you do it. Again, 
don't don't pick on them. This is this is we trying to. This is why we're doing this because these things will hurt you in the field, right here. Well, let me let me tell let me tell you this. Uh, with, with 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 my level, is you got to be you got to is is very difficult. We go ahead on when I give a lesson out. It's my job over the weeks to get that information, whether you can read or not. So, in other words, if you don't give me a lesson back, that doesn't end us. Then we have a two different kind of lesson. One that you can kind of fill out if you can read a little bit. Then the next one you got to know how to read. And at that point that you, you've been doing the other, but you can't do this one, it pops a light, pops on. This person really having a, a, a reading issue. So don't, the person is not thrown away because they don't do the lesson. But I can't go to the door and say, can you read? And, uh, and I know you're not saying that, but, but it's really a sticky, sticky point, especially when you that for the first time. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I was going to say, um, when you ask for the name, I meant the address and the, um, what else was this? The, the name, name and the address. name and address. You also, when you say, well, let me have your name so we can lift you up in prayer. By the way, can I have your phone number? Right, I don't right. know that way, so maybe that's a little too much at the time, but if you get the number, when you do knock at the door the next time, then out there you still have some kind of connection with them with that phone number. Dorsey, I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's a, that's a good point. Everybody can't get names, though. Let me tell you that. Uh, I, when I, when, matter of fact, when I started doing it, nobody was getting names except for our friend. What's her name? Uh, in Chattanooga. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, the, the, let me, I'm coming back. This lady got a number from everybody. And I learned then you can get a number. But guess what? You got to have it right up in your head. If, you have a f if you're nervous about getting a number, you're not going to get a number. Do you understand what I'm saying? You got to be very careful. You got to be very positive and very strong in your own mind. And people who do that get numbers. So, so yeah, brother, yeah, brother, Elder Charles definitely does that. But I had never seen that done. We never got a number because to get a number was going into another level with people. Yeah, that was kind of personal, yeah. But, but I think you have to give, I heard Sister Morton say about getting a number. Go ahead, Sister Morton. Got the address, we have their address. And then I asked, I said, and I'm, I'm writing, I'm not really looking at them face to face. And I'm saying, and what is your number, please? <laughs> Some will get it, rattle it right on. <laughs> then others will say, <laughs> some others will say. Smooth. Smooth is a better word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they will say, why do you need my number? <laughs> so that if anything occurs and I cannot see you next week, I want you to know not to expect me. And I want to inform you. And then, too, you can call me yourself if you have any questions. And normally I get a number. See, that's my problem. The moment you tell me, well, what you going to do with my number? I'm dead in the water. I'm dead in the water. And I know that, so I don't. But let me, let me tell you this. Again, when you go to a door, you're going with what you think is best for this situation. And... Okay, go ahead. If they do not want to give me their number and they insist on that, I said, it's okay. But I don't want you to have my number in case you need to call me for anything, prayer or what have you. Or you may need a ride to the store. That's, somebody say amen. amen. I, I know we just lost somebody else on that one. Because when you get my number, you know, it, it, <laughs> I'm open to everything. But uh, anyway, you got, that's the armor. That's the arm of who you are and, and what you do. And that works for you. You need to, you need to use that. Amen?
When I go to a door now, all this canvas I gave you is probably half of that now. I go to the door and I show enthusiasm to the 10,000 degree. No name, <laughs> no number, and when I get your, I don't ask you for your address, because I see you when I come up on your porch. And when I walk off, I got it and go. I don't get your number, but when you fill out a lesson, you put it on your lesson. So why did I say that? Why I say that is because some of these are the mechanisms we built into it is what we need to feel comfortable. But guess what? If that works for you, you better do it. That's your armor. Amen? But we don't want to presuppose different things over on everybody because the number is a, is a turnoff for me. So I don't use it. I don't, I don't, it's not a part of what I have to have. But these are, that's what we want. Any more questions about what you saw? Yeah, you want to say? Uh, one thing I may have done different uh, but not criticizing what he did is to act like I was giving them something special. Uh, uh, you know, we're doing a survey in this neighborhood, and I just wanted to bring you yours. You know, I heard that a canvas a thousand times. Amen. Somebody say amen. Make it as special. Joy is joy and enthusiasm. Enthusiasm is worth a thousand words. When you come there, and um, and uh, you you robotic, that's a killer. Uh, you so holy, that's a killer. When, they, when you come in and people can realize, oh, man, she holy, she's holier than thou, people pick that up. That doesn't work out there. That may work in the church, but it don't work out there. Because the first a person feel like you beating them down with you better than me, they sense that. That comes through your veins. That comes through your pores. So that's gestures you were talking about a minute ago. Yeah, you know, also when you go to the door, you want to let people know that you're affiliated with more than just yourself. It's not just you out here. You, you, you're affiliated with a group of folks that are, that are represented more than just yourself. So that's what you want to portray when you first come to the door. Okay. All right. I think that's a good idea, too. The bigger, the, again, we say the bigger what you do is always good. You the only one that sounds suspect. You the only one? You the only one in the whole world? No, I'm a part of a, a big organization. All right, let's do the role play again, and then uh, we, uh, y'all looking a little nervous, y'all okay? Okay, all right, okay. All right, let's go to the second week. Okay. What's you, 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 oh, oh, I can tell you, he nervous. We, no more cr critiquing this young man right here. He nervous. <laughs> Listen, you can critique him all you want to. He won 59 precious souls. He critiquing you now. He's, that's your critique, okay? Here you go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, so I knock on the door. Okay, um, when you come to the door. Can we get, Did a, real, can we get a real knock? Thank you. Okay. okay. Hello, who's, it, who's there? Uh, this is Elder Garrett. Oh, okay. How are you doing? Uh, right. Did you get your, you usually this is what sometimes I say. I say you, did you get your homework done that I left with you last week? Uh, yeah, I, I did. I, I did have a little problem with one of your questions. Okay, which, which question is uh, that? It was question number four. Uh, you know, I, I just kind of didn't understand what it was, but, uh, you know, uh, I did a, every every other other uh, okay, question well, on that. Okay, okay. The question says, let's touch whatever that is. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, so, uh, what's your answer to that? Uh, such and such. Oh, and okay, okay, I think okay, I got it now. Okay, and usually <laughs> what I would do uh, is I'll pull out my phone and I'll show and I'll go to the scripture and show it to them then so they get a better understanding. Great, great, great. But then I'm congratulating for bringing us and then I'll give them the second lesson. Then you give them the second one. The second lesson. Okay. Am, am I going to get uh, rated on this? Uh, yes, sir. And I'll let them use this. Now, it, it, it just depends on what kind of time we have there. I'll grade it with them right then or I'll uh, take it next week. Next time I see them next week, we'll grade it and have it next Okay. Week. All right. Tradition, what do you do? Do y'all take it take it to back home uh, to grade it or do you do it right then? On <laughs> Normally, we don't grade at that time. Okay. Just leave it with them. Okay. All right. That's what I, that's what I thought. So you take it back. That's also another reason to go back to the home. Right. Especially when that, if that person tell you, I don't want another lesson. You, boy, that's that's the one you don't want to hear. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, don't you, don't, I don't want another lesson. 
but now you still can go back because you're returning the lesson that they've already done. Amen. And you're praying that this week that all will be well when you get back. I uh, had a scenario where, and a number of them, where when you, when you go to the door and they said, I can do this right now. I said, oh, okay, let's do it right now. <laughs> so they're marking, reading, marking, marking. And well, how did I do? I said, I'll tell you what, I'll come back next come on, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me give you your next one, your five through eight. And I'll come back next week, and then we can sit down and go over the lesson. And you'll see how well you did. And I know you're going to do well. Yeah, right. that was, oh, that's amen, amen, amen. Um, you know, sometimes when you come and uh, – you, you, you'll get all kind of scenarios. Uh, we're just taking you through a couple of them, but there's hundreds of them. Um, I've been asked some questions, like a person says, maybe three weeks down the line, they said to me, uh, so, so what, what was your name again? And for a few seconds, I couldn't remember what my name was. Now, you can laugh all you want to, but keep on living, honey. You're going to find out that that can happen to the best of you. But it didn't look good. <laughs> it didn't look good. It didn't look good. You're going to get caught in times like that where you are just blown away. You wasn't expecting. And, um, you know, there's different people. There's different persuasions. Uh, some are on a tip of etiquette of how things are to be said. And, done. and if you don't rise to the occasion or if you blunder then, they figure out, you know what, this ain't real. So you got to always, that's why, let me tell you this, that's why when I get tired and I, or I get hungry, I have, to, I have to rest or I have to eat because you're not giving the best when you are tired and you're hungry. Amen? Go away for, with your partner. Don't do it by yourself. Go away, get you a little break, get you a little rest because you want to be, your, you wanna be sharp at all times. You're representing the kingdom of God. And that can't be any lag of any kind. Uh, any more questions? This is question and answer time. Yeah. Now they're not scared to say anything about you, bro. But no, just we, if there's any question you have about anything that's been presented or anything that you see on the, uh, fl uh, on the canvas or in the uh, other material, uh, you can feel free to, to ask a question about that now. It's question and answer time. Okay, Elder. Uh, uh, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, how has COVID changed how pre-work is done? Some people don't want you to come to their house. Uh, how has pre-work changed and what adjustments would you suggest that Bible workers keep in mind as they do pre-work during COVID? Okay, I, I'm thankful, Elder, for that question. Let me throw this out as our springboard. In his word, baptized around 400 people ever since COVID gets started, all over the country. Why did I say that? That means evangelism is still alive. Where most people are no longer even running meetings, churches have not opened up, evangelism is still alive. And what has made the change is we have to do a lot of things manually, which means we're doing this process, going in the field, but also virtual. And so now we got a virtual where people will hear and see that which you, they used to have to come to the, to the event to see. So that means decisions now uh, often made in the home. Oh, y'all missed that. And I want to I, I go ahead and tell you this. I think that's what it should have been anyway. If I am confined for whatever reason, in jail, in prison, whatever reason, I can't get to the house of the Lord, that should have been a second option for me anyway. And it probably was one, but we always didn't lean on it. So now we're leaning on, hey, listen, you hear this seminar, I'm checking that you're listening to this seminar, I'm asking you questions, and I have identified that you heard what the speaker said, 
even though you were in your home, then we, we go around, we still do the groundwork, we still do with distancing, with hygiene and everything else, but at the end of the day, we're still able to bring people to Christ. Is that okay? Go ahead, you want to add to that? I'm so sorry. Fear is what the enemy wants us to just um, revel in. He doesn't want us to reach anyone. And he felt that this would kind of hinder. It may to a degree. But God always has a way. Come on, come on, come on. Always has a way to reach individuals. So he just says go forward and he'll do the rest. But we must be cautious. Very, very cautious. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I think it's one thing we have to do. We have to be prayed up before you even go to the home because sometimes you come to the house. I don't know what I've done with that paper. The child got to it. The child to it up. I don't know. People have a rough day all the time. But you have to give a kind and cultural answer. That's okay. I understand. I've been, I've been praying for this family. And I'll be glad to let you know. You got to be kind and cultural. And you can't let what the people say to you affect how you respond back because you can say, hey, just forget about it. I ain't worried about it. I ain't coming back no how. You can do that, but you can win the battle, but you lose the wall. All right, Jerry Lewis. All right. We're going to we're gonna have to replace the microphone after you got through, though. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes, ma'am. I was wondering if there's a way maybe that we can add an ID or something um, that we can all have because going into the senior citizens with yeah. me helping them i know a lot of them are very scared to open their doors because mm -hmm. there's so much crime right right yes that, that that's that's always that's always good that's good if you can do that uh does breath of life have uh pa yeah yeah right right and uh with names yeah breath of life has name uh, so that you can recognize them as a part of the team. Huh? Yeah. Title on that and the name. So that's 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 awesome. Uh, in his word, no name tag, no ID, no nothing. Get in there and get that soul. Somebody say amen. You gotta have different ways. I'm gonna tell you. Let me just share this. The reason why I said that is that you gotta have different ways to do what you do. This is what I'm talking about. Here's a place that says, before you come in here, uh, somebody would say, you need to talk to the manager, right? We got people in here that are manager people. They're going to go in and talk to the manager. I'm not a manager person. I'm going to go in and get the people. And then the manager is going to stop me. And then I'm going to talk to the manager. Now, what, what, what's the difference? One is the manager tells you you can't come out here. You can't get one soul. You ain't going to get one person out of here. The manager going to come out and tell me you can't, you can't do this. But I've already signed up 20 people. And the manager really can't keep me from coming back to people who said I can come back. Y'all missed that. You got to have both people. You got to have both people who can do it both ways. Amen? It's going to come a time that nobody's going to give you a permission to do nothing. What you going to do then? You ain't going to do nothing. Because that's the only way that you can work. No, you, you, sometimes you got to be a renegade for the Lord. You got a question? Oh, it's no way. It's no way. For real? Okay, all right. Jeffrey, and then I'll get you.
<laughs> okay, I like that. I like that. That's another way to another way to look at it. Amen. Amen. All right, Sister Morton. Um, sometimes I have stated, "Well, you're not soliciting Jesus. You can't solicit Jesus." You know. But they still look at you and then say, "No, I'm sorry." <laughs> But what we have found, some of us, we may be sitting in a vehicle parked and uh, someone will come out of the gate and uh, we will present the lesson to them. And we let them know we are having difficulty getting in. And so we ask, or they will say, well, I have your number, what have you. I'll give you the code. When you make build a report, you know, just that quickly. If they're truly interested, they will give you that code. Come on. And then sometimes you ask, may I have a code? I, you know, you yourself. And they may ponder, and then some will just say, sure. God will open the door. I guess what you can wrap this in is you can't be passive. You got to be very aggressive. And you have to let people tell you no, which they have a right to do. Amen? Yes, I want to say one last thing. Um, I was in... Um, telemarketing sales and um, they taught you how to like appeal to the emotions yeah. where you can use that um, in, a, in a positive way where like um, the lady said here right. that instead of sounding like you're selling a product that you're interested in, when you hear a baby crying say oh how old is the baby mm -hmm. or oh something smells good mm -hmm. and you get people to talk and you, right. you're more interested in them right. you know first instead of presenting all what you have right, you right, know, sure, right. sure that you're interested in their need right, right, right. Yes. excellent Excellent. That is relationship building, what, sh what she's talking about. So that you can understand is the lesson is just the entering wage. People get that mixed up. When they're giving that lesson, if they're not doing that lesson, the person, the Bible work is all out of sort. It ain't about them. It's not about the lesson. It is, it is if you got that kind of person that, that, that thrives off of reading the word and everybody's not like that. So if you don't have that, you have to be able to, to, to work with the other things that you are seeing going on in the, my punch word, this is my punch word, let me tell you what I do. When I do this, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to baptize somebody. Y'all ready for this? Write it down. Where you from? And they say, um, I'm from uh, Atlanta. Oh wow, you, you from Atlanta? Oh, I got a friend. You know, you evidently got some kind of commitment. And when I start, the next day we're talking about their grandmother, their grandchildren, how many siblings. I, that's what I want to get to. That's what, yeah, that's what works for me. Right, right, right. I don't want to just talk about this piece of paper uh, because uh, that, if I don't make a friend with you, you're not going to come. That's just the bottom line. The paper doesn't necessarily give, for some people, that paper does build a relationship, but it's not many. You got to be, you got to go beyond that paper and, and move toward building with words and communication that rings people's ears. Amen? Anybody, any, any, any other catchphrase you use? Or anybody else? Lee, y'all got a, y'all got a catchphrase that you use? Yeah, yeah, no, to build a relationship. Still, as some may say, I'm busy. I can't talk to you right now. All right, well, here's your lesson. I'll come back next week. When you go back, you're letting them know. You know, I, when I was at your door, I saw this beautiful plant, you know, this beautiful plant. And they love that because you are being personal with them. They love that, and so it will just take off from that where you build the relationship continually, and then they become your friend, and you can always invite a friend out. That is your friend. Yeah, see, that helps him. When you were literature evangelist, you had to do those things in that work as well. Go ahead. And, and I've been kicked out. And, <laughs> and, and, and then I evangelize the security, and they're like, yeah, but you understand you can't stay here, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, Lord is a, is a wonderful, yeah. wonderful acronym. Gotcha. For That's family, good. Family, occupation, religion, testimony. testimony. Right, right. So if you can't think of what to say, you remember that Ford, and then it's an easy way to open the door. Right. If you heard of the, if you heard the acronym Ford, raise your hand. Some of you all have heard that. Ford, family, occupation, religion, testimony. How's your family? Where you from? And then they say, oh, da, 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 da. Uh, what do you do? That's occupation. Then, um, you know, um, what, what do you do? You go, get to go to church sometime? And uh, then you get your testimony. And you have, you have uh, built, you're building relationship with that. Ford, F-O-R-T. Good point. There's some other acronyms out there, but that's a great one now. Anybody else? Oh, we, 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 we crunching this now. This is, this is what I wanted to get to here. This is what I wanted to get to. These are the little gems that'll help you. Okay. Oh, my goodness. You couldn't pray on people. Hey, Jerry Lewis, that's, it. that's one of his strengths as well with the prayer cards. Uh, we got to understand... Um, um. Please come to the mic if you have a question. The people at home are complaining they can't hear you. Okay. So please come to the microphone. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, so understand, understand, so I can help out. You, you, when, when, we, uh, f when we do that, we really, really, you know, hardly anybody, and I heard, I heard Lewis say this, hardly anybody can refuse prayer. That's a, that's a tough one to say, oh, I don't even want you praying for me. That's a, you, you know you got a serious case there. So that is, that is, that is excellent. Uh, and actually, pre-work doesn't have to have a lesson in order to do it. You do a lesson like we do. That's what we do. But prayer could be the pre-work. You would come, say to them, hey, I'm here. Uh, what are your prayer requests? Get the prayer requests and say, listen, I'm going to be praying for you all week and I'm going to come back. And you come back next week, did the Lord answer your prayer? And you can do it. I've seen water ministries where you start getting people to drink so much water. You would say, listen, my life has been changed, and uh, let's start with a glass of water this week. It is pre-work is just to get you into the home. Once you get into the home, you got to know how to make people your friend. Amen? Uh, let me say this before you say this. Seventh-day Adventists are bad at making friends. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, go ahead and start throwing the stones. Amen. We are bad at making friends. Oh, yes, we are. Amen. We, we don't go to things that people ask us to go to. Then when you ask them to come to church, you want them to come. Your family, say, when you ask them to come, you don't want a reason they don't come because when you have a family reunion, you won't go. Oh, y'all missed that. So we want them to come to everything we ask them to come to, but we everything uh, uh, they ask us to come to, we don't go because we, we're holier than them. Amen? I'm actually trying to break that down in my family now. Me and my cousin, I got a cousin that's a pastor, and we're communicating more and more and more. Tell them, listen, man, you done heard things about Seventh-day Adventist. They ain't true. <laughs> I'm trying to fight that thing because we done built up a wall. Amen? Okay, I'm all right. Here's a scenario uh, that happens quite often. Bible worker, um, the Bible worker had built a relationship um, with the person, but the person hadn't made any commitments, uh, the meeting hadn't stopped, but you have a pretty good relationship with them, and then they ask for uh, some type of help, uh, food or uh, having a bill paid or something like that. How should we handle that? Repeat that question one more time, my the, brother. The scenario is that the Bible worker has built a relationship with an individual and established a relationship, and that person asked the Bible worker for some type of help as far as food or helping out financially or bills or something like that. How should the Bible worker have on that? And this is before they've made a commitment to anything. Okay, all right. And I, actually, this has to be our last comment for now because we're right at our break period. Is that okay, Sister Trump? Thank you. You know? Yeah. Okay. When that occurs, and they may just bring that out as you're giving them the lesson, 
I need some help. I need some food. I need this bill paid. You the church, what can you do for me? So this is what I can do for you. First we're gonna pray about it because because God opened this door. And we can go to the store. I'm able, or we have a, uh, at the church, we have food giveaway, we have a pantry, and I'd be more than happy to bring you to the church with me, and you can get some food for your family. As far as the bill is concerned, I will go and speak with someone at the church to see what can be done. I never say we are going to do it when it comes to finances. I'm going to do it such and such. But if they're asking for, and you have to be careful with this, I need uh, $2 right now, five, about $10, because I need to go get something for my child. Well, you really gotta pray about that. But then, if you have the $10 and you can spare all the five, just give it to them. <laughs> You'll find out later if they're sincere about it or not, because people will use you. So you've got to know the difference. That's why you ask the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct. <laughs> yeah, and some do that. And some do that. And I have said myself, I don't have any cash on me. I, I don't. But you've got to connect with the individuals. And some can be so persuasive. But then you find out they're using you. And they're not coming out to any meeting, any gathering, or what have you. But you've done your part. And that's written in the books of heaven. Mm -hmm. People with some more comments. Hopefully in the next session, uh, we'll be allowed. We don't want you to hold back, but we want to stick to being on time. Thank you for allowing us to come before you. Uh, we're going to take a 10, 15 minute break in order to get ourselves together. Those who are online, we're going into break, just letting you know. And we praise God for you sticking with us this far. God bless you and we love you.
All right, all right. Uh, good morning again. We want to get back and, and, and get started again. Uh, so let's just give a, a, a hand clap praise for uh, Sister Alice Morton and um, Pastor Miller. And you're going to see him again in just a few seconds. Um, we want to, now that you have, we've gone over what you need to go over as it relates to trying to uh, uh, build a relationship with people. And I just want to say this as we move into the next section. Next, se next section. If you don't have a relationship with a person, you are not soul winning. That's the first thing I want to say. If you do not have a relationship with a person, you are not, you are not a, a minister of healing, page 143, you're not doing that. We're not trying to simply get a person through a process so that we can put them, have them put on a robe and go in some water. Here's the reason why that's the, here, we need to begin with the end in mind. The end in mind is, is for a person to make a decision for Christ. But that's not the end. That's the beginning of the beginning. Matthew 28, 18, 19, 18, 19, it is teach, baptize, teach. Teach them enough to make up an honest, sincere decision. Baptize them publicly based upon that decision and then continue to teach for the rest of their life. And then a part of that teaching is to teach them how to teach. So this is about building a relationship. And the reason why I want to say that is I don't want anyone who's looking at this conference now or who looks at this rebroadcast to, rec to, to get mixed up that this is not about building relationships. And I'm going to say this final thing. Public evangelism has a specific purpose in the evangelism journey. Public evangelism is to get a person who is ready to meet Jesus immediately. Okay? In a tree, there's a top of the tree, middle of the tree, and the low-hanging fruit. And public evangelism is for that low-hanging fruit. And that's what we have to use it for. And you have to build a relationship in order to introduce, uh, uh, you have to be someone's friend to introduce them to your friend, Jesus Christ. And so that's where we are. Now, now, now that you have done the pre-work and you've built the relationship, now it's time to transition them from the relationship at the door to the relationship that's going to be built at the meeting site. And this is also going to include uh, what we have to do it with now, which is virtual, okay? So now we're going to bring up our devotional speaker uh, for this particular for this particular part, uh, Pastor Timothy Lee, and he's going to begin to lead us in the section of uh, getting prospects to the meeting site. Here is Pastor Lee. Please give him a hand clap of praise. Praise the Lord. Um, I enjoyed. Our last session, there's so much that goes into meeting someone cold turkey and knowing that you're there for their soul. Amen? You're there so that they may make that connection uh, between themselves and the Lord. Uh, and so some of what we've heard already is going to be covered in this session as well. And this session is kind of, kind of expanding upon that. Uh, I did have a PowerPoint that we're going to put up that way you can kind of see it along with me. It's the other one, uh, getting them to the meeting. I have two of them up there. There's a there's a second one I put up there. I should say getting them to the meeting. Jerry, will you do me a favor while I handle this? Uh, Pastor Miller, will you give them a few more tips on what we covered? I want to give them the next PowerPoint.
really goes above and beyond with regard to um, dealing with the needs of the new believers. We've, we've done interesting things to meet their needs. Uh, some of them have so many needs you can't even understand how they were getting along. And uh, you realize that some come to the evangelistic um, for the loaves and the fishes. And there are others who are sincere, but they still need to know how much we care. And as Sister Morton was saying, um, you bring them to the pantry, and when they call you in the middle of the night, you don't have a pantry to take them to. So you take them to the supermarket, and you get what they need when they got five children. And um, in the case of one of our new believers, Christmas Eve, which was last couple of weeks ago, she called us at six o'clock. And I said, um, you realize it's the Sabbath. I said, you had all day long, and you knew that your children didn't have food. We're going to take you and get some food now. But um, this is a big guy here, and he eats. And if I don't have anything prepared before sunset, he will have peanut butter. Now, um, please don't ask us to do this again on the Sabbath, and we will meet the rest of your needs after sunset. very personal work. It doesn't stop after the meeting. It doesn't stop after the meeting. But we all always have to continue to ask the Lord to make us wise in how to handle certain situations and certain people. And it's okay sometimes to say no. You have to remember that as a Bible worker. It's even with, you know, it's so good to see Sister Alice Morton uh, here. She holds a special place with me knowing that she was one of the Bible workers that came to Toledo, Ohio, that meeting that brought me into this church, this great church, and um, to see her and continue. I've had the opportunity to work along with her as a Bible worker with Breath of Life and with uh, Pastor Miller as well. And so it's just full circle. What you pour into somebody, you never know what you're going to get out. So I think we have the right uh, PowerPoint ready. There we go. And so it's, we're going to continue on, just kind of expanding on now. So you've met them. You've gone over some Bible studies with them. You've built a rapport and a relationship with them. And now the meeting is about to happen, and you need to get these people out of the house and to the meeting, right? And some of us, you know, we kind of want to do like the picture. We just want to grab them and drag them on over there, but it don't quite work that way, right? Well, I wish we could do that, but we need to be able to use techniques that will help us get there. And so... What we're going to talk about today is I have six appeals for us to realize that we can appeal to these people in different ways, right? The first one is we must appeal through God's word, right? We must appeal through God's word. You've been seeing them week after week and sometimes even day after day as it gets closer to the meeting, you're seeing them more often. And you've had this time with them in the word. You've gone through these lessons. And you can use that word through God's word to get them to come to the meeting. So what you want to be able to do is you'll say something how God has more to say. Right? So you utilize their desire to learn more to get them to the meeting. They've been learning with you. They've studied these little pamphlets. They're not exhaustive on these subjects. They're just a few little questions on those Bible subjects, but they want to know more. They, they've really found these lessons to be so amazing. You can say things like, well, if you've enjoyed what you've learned so far, wait till you hear about such and such, right? Wait till you hear the lesson on heaven, on the second coming. You can use the fact that they learn and they're loving what they're learning in the word of God to get them to hear more of the word of God, right? This little Bible lesson is just a glimpse of what we talked about in heaven or hell or what to eat and what not to eat. We are going to dedicate a whole nice lesson to this. You do not want to miss it because they already want to know more. They've learned something and it sparked something in them. So you want to use God's word to continue bringing them out to hear more of God's word. This is your chance to know God for yourself, right? 
There are plenty of people, millions of Christians that go to churches every week, but they have no clue why they believe what they believe, right? They just go to church, that's the way it's been, it's their tradition, but now that you've come and started breaking the word down to them, and they actually know, wow, this is what the Bible actually says. And the meeting is an opportunity for them to kind of learn more for themselves. Now you'll know, and you won't have to wonder why you believe what you believe. Now you can get a better understanding of the word. So you want to use God's word. Another thing is, you want to show them that God is speaking to them. This is a divine appointment. Remember that. You, it, it is not happenstance. It is not a coincidence that you are there. And you need to get them to realize that this is a divine appointment. You've knocked on hundreds of thousand doors, and the fact that you opened your door, the fact that you let me in your house, this is no coincidence. God is at work right now, right? So you can do things like tell them of the story of Zacchaeus. They may not remember or have even heard of that story. Let them know. You know, Zacchaeus was this wee little man, and he wanted to see Christ. Christ had come to town, and Christ picked him out out of all the people that were around. He said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. And you need to let them know. Christ may not be walking up and down the street, but he's sending his workers. He sent me, and he wants you to get a relationship with him. This is a divine appointment. This is not just, oh, some church is doing what they do. No, God sees you. He understands you. He's thinking of you. And he sent me here at this time. And right now, me and you are here. It is a divine appointment. Talk to them about Jesus calling his disciples, right? Christ picked them out personally. And they need to understand, Christ is still calling. Christ still wants people to be with him. And guess what? This moment, at this time, you're studying his word. This meeting that's happening on the next couple of nights, this is not a coincidence. It is divine that you and I are here today. God is calling you. God wants you to get a great relationship with him. God wants you to understand what he has in store for you. This is a divine appointment. Amen? Also, you can appeal through not only God's word, but you can appear through their word. Because if you listen closely, I'm not sure. should be on slide number six. What they say, a lot of times, if you're wise, you can use that to get them out to the meeting, right? We talked earlier about catchphrases. You need to learn to listen to them. They'll say stuff like, I've been looking for a church home, right? That's their work. Well, if you've been looking for a church home, well, this meeting may be the church home you're looking for. That's their work. I, I need to get back in the church. That's their work. Well, if you, you said you need to be, get back in the church, and here is a wonderful church to go to. At least come check it out. This might be the church you need to get back into. I believe God has sent you here to me. That's a good one. Now you, you're putting God on the hook. You say God sent me here. You don't want to disappoint the Lord. This has been the answer to my prayers. Well, if you've been praying and God has answered it, then you need to get your hips in church. He sent me here as an answer to your prayer. Let's go. I've learned things 
I've never known before. Well, if you want to continue, we're not done. God is still speaking. Come to the church. Use what they have said to get them to come out each night. The other thing that you can, you can do through their word is gain little decisions. Look for a yes with every visit, right? Now, that, that there are two big decisions that were mentioned. The first big decision is getting them to come to church. Second big, second big decision is getting them to accept Christ and, 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 be, and be a member of his church, right? But before those two big decisions, there are a lot of little decisions that can be made. And you want to make sure with every visit, they're still saying yes. Hey, did you understand the lesson? Yes, I understand. Are you having a good time? You're glad it came out? Yes, I'm glad you're coming. This is great. Whatever it may be, as long as they're still saying yes, by the time you're ready to invite them to the meeting, it's just another yes. Right? And so you look for little yeses on, on those first few visits to be able to get that big yes, it won't seem so big because they've already been saying yes with the other visits. You want to guide them through their conviction. If they've already said in a home, yes, I believe that the seventh day of the Sabbath, then you use that. Yes, I believe that uh, uh, Christ is coming soon, then you use that. You guide them through their conviction. You already said yes to these things. Please say yes to coming to the church, right? Appeal through their situation, something we were just talking about. People are going through a lot. Most of the people that you're going to run into are not usually in a predicament where they've got all the free time, they're just ready to serve the Lord. Most of them are going through some serious stuff, right? But they don't realize their need of the church. And that's what you can use to help get them to the church. I know too many people that are going through so many things and they just won't come to church because of all the stuff they're going through. And they don't realize, well, you need to be at church because of all the stuff you're going through. Right? But when you begin to help them to understand what the church is for, the benefits of being a part of a community and a family, and you have brothers and sisters in Christ that can help you and encourage you, what church is good for? You're looking for answers, but you're looking for them all in the wrong places. And if you just come to church, if you just come out, you will realize that God has so much in store for you. What you're looking for, the help you need is in the house. The church can help them through church ministries that we talked before. Whether it's community service, or food, or whatever it may be, if they want the help, you've got these situations, come, and the church can help you. Not only that, but you can also appeal to them through your actions, right? I like this slide. It says, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? And this is especially true when it comes to the church because there's so many people who've been hurt by churches. Pastors have done them wrong. Church members have done them wrong. People have done crazy things in the name of the church, in the name of the Lord, right? And so when you are a Christian, sometimes saying church is a cuss word out there. Right? They, they got some serious issues with church, and sometimes you can't be so churchy at the door. But, but your presence, your action shows them. It begins to break them down. They may think, well, at least this person's church is not, it's not like the one I went to before because they, they care. They, they're showing me something different in their actions, right? It says here, it's hard to refuse someone who has helped you. All of us have had someone who's been there for us, have been by our side, and we'll do anything for them because of what they've done for us. We talked about things like this. Give them a ride if they need a ride. Show up at their gathering. Don't overstay your welcome. 
but show up. Let them know, hey, I heard you had a birthday party and I just wanted to come say happy birthday. Drop off a little card for you. Maybe even pray for you. And what they'll do is they'll introduce everybody. Else. Oh, this is the minister that's been coming to my house doing the Bible study. Now, not only are you able to invite them out, but you can invite the family. You mind if I invite the family? Just tell them about the meeting. Yeah, sure, go ahead and tell them. Hey, we're having this meeting starting on Saturday night. We want all of you to come. She's coming. It's going to be a great time. And, and it's easier for them to say yes because they see how much you care about them. Provide the, a service to them. Now, that service doesn't mean uh, doing something you know you can't handle or the church can't handle, right? I've met people who want to go out and they want to witness to the homeless. The homeless need the gospel too. But don't promise the homeless we're going to buy them a, ch a house. We can't do that. That's not the service that we can do. But if you see someone, you go to their house and the railing on their stairs is loose, go get your tools and screw it down. Talk to them and make conversation with them. They will see that you care for them, that you just took a little moment to screw down the railing in their house so that they won't fall, they won't fall over and hurt someone else. Simple things that you can do that show that you care. Always be encouraging to them. We live in a time where everybody feels like it's me against the world, right? They, 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 they go to work and they gotta hustle and grind at work and they don't seem like they're gonna get anywhere but, but, they, get, but they gotta do what they gotta do for the little pennies they're making. Then they come home and they got to fight and fuss with the spouses and the children at home. And it doesn't seem like there's anything encouraging in life. But when you come there and you tell them what you see in them and what you see God is going to do in it, and you keep encouraging them and you keep letting them know how good things can turn out, when they see how encouraging you are for them, they'll want more of that. They'll want to go where you go because they're going to be, they want to be around more people who are encouraging to them. Showing interest in their children. A lot of times you'll go in, you want to do that Bible study, and they'll send the kids off somewhere. Well, well, before they go, make sure you learn the kid's name. Bring them some fruit or something like that, and, and, and let them know you see them, that you pay attention to them. Many people go to church only because that church has something for their children. And they can say, well, this church pays attention to my kids. How do, how, why would they make that assumption? Because you represent the church. This church has something for my kids, even if they at least show some interest to them. They're not just some busybodies running around getting on people's nerves. They know their name. My kids look forward to them coming. It goes a long way. Basically, what it's saying is you have to go beyond the Bible study. Right? The Bible study is good. The Bible study is the initiator. But beyond that, show them that you are truly there for them. And when it's time to say, let's go to the meeting, it's easy for them to say. They've been waiting on it. They can't wait for opening night. They want to go with you because of how you have treated them. Okay? The other one is that you want to appeal to them through the miracle of God. And this is a big one here. When you go into these homes, into these communities, you've got to believe for yourself that the power of God is with you. I got one amen. That's all right. You've got to believe for yourself that the power of God is with you. Don't be afraid to call on the name of the Lord when you see the thing that these people need help for. I don't know how many times I've gone to door and somebody behind that door is sick. Somebody behind that door is hurting. And I will go believing that God will heal them, that God will help them, that God will rectify their situation. And he does it for them. And because what God does for them through these miracles, they are willing to come and see and hear more. I'll get that later. I know it sounds frightening, but we're Christians. You should be, you are sent there to do what nobody else. The reason why flocks 
went to Jesus, thousands of people, was because of what he could do. I was having a debate. I remember uh, being at Oakwood having a debate with one of my friends, and we were talking about uh, winning souls and, and, and evangelism. And he said something like, man, if I had 100 Bible workers in one city, man, we would do great work. I would win so many souls with 100 Bible and I said to him, that would be great, but just let me raise one person from the dead. I won't need any Bible lessons, Elder. I ain't got to knock on nobody. They going to come to me. Let me raise one person from if I would have been in Houston at George Floyd's funeral. And said, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and walk to that casket. And in the name of the Lord, cause him to raise out of that casket. Would I need a Bible study in my hand? No. I don't need a hundred Bibles. They are going to come. We are Christians. We represent Christ. He said the same power he has, he's given to us. And when you go to these doors, go with power. You don't have to be wondering, oh, do I know the Bible enough? Are they going to say a verse that I haven't memorized yet? You have power at your disposal. And they need that power. They need a real representation of Christ. And when those miracles happen, you can begin to tell, man, look at what God did for you. You should come to church based upon what God has done. Whether he's healed them, he's Rectify the situation that they've been that they've been in. You gotta help them see God did this. This just didn't happen. It wasn't perfect timing. God did this for you, and you should come to church tonight. Give Him praise for what He did for you. They will do it. Now I'm almost finished. Here's the secret sauce. Because all of what I said is good, but without this, none of it really works. Or well, it'll seemingly work. But what makes a soul stick is the secret sauce. With every decision, Christ must be placed front and center. You understand this? Every decision, Jesus says, if he is lifted up, right, and I, if I be lifted up, he will draw all men. See, you think you got to be so charming. But it is not your charm that brings them. If you keep Christ front and center, Christ promises he will draw them to him. This is the saw. This is what we need to learn. Far too often we take this work upon ourselves and we think that we have to be so excellent, so, so skilled to get these people to come. We do need skill. We do need learning. That's why we're here. But what we need to be most skilled at is giving them Christ. And the wife says the very first and most important thing is to melt and subdue the soul. How? by presenting our Lord Jesus Christ as the sin-pardoning Savior. Let them know Christ's sacrifice and what he has done, and that sacrifice was for them. It wasn't just for folk 2,000 years ago. He died so that you could be at this meeting. He died so that your life could be changed. He died so that your children's life can be changed. He is in heaven right now. He is pouring over you, mourning over you, rooting for you. Christ is here. Christ wants you to be at this meeting. She says it this way. She says, Christ crucified. Talk about it. Pray it. Sing it. And it will break and win hearts. You're wondering, man, what do I need to say? Uh, I should have said this. I shouldn't have said that. But if you keep Christ front and center, keep Christ in the front, 
he will break their heart. He will help them to understand, wow, this is truly a divine appointment. Wow, God really has this for me. When I think about when I came into this church in 1999 and all the people that I was baptized with, I still can't help but to think of all the people in the city that the Lord sent them there just for me. That meeting came just for me. Keep Christ central. Make sure they understand the subject. Is God's word clear? It's not my word. Not your word. This is God's word. Do you have any question on what the Holy Ghost has taught us? Right? This is not the Adventist teaching. Right? This is not the church teaching or, or oh, that's what you believe. No, this is what the Holy Ghost is teaching us. Can you see how Jesus is leading you today? Christ wants you to come to this meeting. You must make them feel as if they would be rejecting God, not you. It's easy to tell Pastor Lee no. Thank Pastor Lee for coming by, but no, I got too much going on. I got this, I got It's easy to tell you and me no, but it's much harder when they believe and they feel convicted that God is in the house. It's harder for them to say, no, Jesus, I ain't coming. These simple appeals have worked for me throughout the years. These simple appeals are only a few. There are more. There are, there are other phrases that people will say that you just got to pick up on. And that's the Holy Ghost giving you a clue as to what you can use. But when the meeting is taking place because of what they said, what they're doing, what's going on in their life, you got to recognize how Christ has worked it out for such a time as this. Keep Christ central in everything, in every study you do, in every visit you make, when you help them to understand how important God has placed them on his list, it's hard for them to tell Jesus no. Not that it doesn't happen, but it's very hard. It's so much easier to tell you no. So much easier to tell the church no. But when you've done your best to lift him up, now he must keep his promise to draw them. I'm not called to draw. I'm only called to be a noise maker. I'm only called to say, hey, you need to get to the house. Christ will do the rest. Amen? Uh, if you didn't get them, I want to put them on a the list. These are the six appeals. Appeal to them. Through God's word, you've been reading and studying with them. Let the word of God bring them. Appeal to them through their word. They will always tell you something that you can use to get them to the world, to the house. Appeal to them to their situations. Help them to realize the stuff you're going through. You need church. Don't need to not be at church. You need to be at church. That's what we're here for. Appeal to them through your actions. Let them see the church in you. There's a lady uh, that I baptized in my district in Oklahoma. And she was dealing with some health issues. And she was uh, at the hospital. And things were looking pretty serious for her. But she was so, how should I say? She was so relaxed in the Lord satisfied in Jesus her nurses and her doctors were wondering how come you're not afraid or not worried about this situ this health situation why you're in the hospital and all she could do was share with them was how good God had been and that she knew God is going to be faithful and that this body is only just one body she'll get a brand new body she did her best to let them know that God has made me satisfied if today is my last day, I'm all right. 
But if he going to bring me out, I'm all right with that too. And she did her best to exemplify Christ. So much so, the doctors broke their rule and began talking about religion with her. And the doctor said to her, Are the rest of, is the rest of your church like you? I've never seen such a Christian. I've only heard about Christians like you on TV. And she was able to tell that doctor, you know, you're not supposed to do this type of stuff, but she was able to tell that doctor, come to my church. You'll see more brothers and sisters just like me. Appealed to him through his miracles. God is always working. God is all, even if it is, you had to go buy him some groceries. The Lord bought you these groceries. God provided for you. And because what God has done for you, you need to come to the church. And all of these things, keep Christ in you. Let him know it is Jesus, it is the Lord. And not me, not the church. God is here. I'm going to bring up Pastor Miller. He's going to do the second portion of this. Are there any questions before he comes up? Any hands, any hands? Questions on getting people to come? Yes. What about when they're getting outside interference? In other words, they want to come, you've made the appeals, and they're, they're willing, but maybe their pastor or family member is trying to discourage them. Yeah, yeah. There are two things you, you could do. Always you want to be able to knock down their objections with the word of God first, right? So you want to be able to take them to scripture and show them how people always have had distractions, how the Lord has always worked it out, but they had to make the decision for themselves, right? That God may not be calling your pastor to this meeting. God is calling you. It is a divine appointment for you, not your pastor, not your job, your boss. This is Your job can't get you to heaven or hell. Well, it might take you to hell, but it sure ain't going to get you to heaven. You need to appeal to them and make them understand that. Is that, is that clear? That's why one of the points was help them understand this is a divine appointment. Okay. Maybe, maybe some of you all may have not experienced this, but I have. I built a good relationship with the person in the home. She just happened to be a lady. And I come back, and I never met the gentleman, but when I meet the gentleman, I, she, don't, she don't need that. Mm -hmm. What do I do? Do I buck the system? Do I go over him when he tell me she don't need that? I, I, I can't come back no more. What do I do? Right. Well, there, there are always variables that we are out of our control. Every week I've been meeting the wife. The meeting starts. Now I meet the husband. And he speaks for the wife who's supposed to be coming. Right? There are certain situations that you don't want to force yourself on. Remember, this is a divine work. Hey, man, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, I was under the impression that she was coming. Just let her know I stopped by. And you pray on that thing. God, I'm telling you, learn, uh, listen to me. You got to learn how to call on the name of the Lord. You got to use the power that is at your disposal. We've had people come to meetings when their spouses did not want them to come. We've had people's lives be threatened for coming to church, but they came anyway. And on your, your part, you're fighting for them. You recognize what the devil is doing through their spouse, and you got to get that demon out of there. And it's only going to take you believing what God can do. But you never want to cross over someone's uh, home situation, their relationship. That's not our place. Okay? Getting back to the first question, do you think it's a good idea to use what they've written down when they have a question or they're being deterred from going to a meeting? What did you write down? What did you get from the Bible? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Because some of what they write down 
may be in error. And so I can say, man, I see you're struggling with this. It's not quite right. Man, we're going to have a whole night on this topic. You want to be there for that night. You, you, it'll be crystal clear. And it'll be straight from the word of God. And so whatever they've written down, you can use those notes and, to, and use that for getting into the meeting. Definitely. I just wanted to throw this out there because we deal with this a lot. Uh, we have an individual uh, that tell you that they're coming and, and you suggest that you pick them up, but they are determined to drive themselves. In most cases, they don't show up. So right. it's throwing that out there if you want to address that. Okay. Right. So getting them to the meeting, remember the bait is transportation, right? I don't want anybody to drive. I'm coming to get you. I am knocking down that objection. I don't want, I don't even want you to think about your car. Save the gas. Save the money. Don't worry about traffic. I do all of that, right? I'm coming to get you at least the first night. Just come with me this first night. If, the, if you enjoy it, and I, 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 then you're able to gauge from their reaction that they very may, wait, very well may drive out the next night on, them, on their own. But that first night, whatever that first night be, may be, whether it's opening night or their first night coming, I'm coming to get you. I don't want anything, because the devil will use anything he can to get them not to be there. They'll hop in their car, get a phone call, and somebody need them to come pick them up somewhere. And all of a sudden, they done turned off, and, and they're not following you no more. You want them in a the vehicle with you. Amen. Okay? Amen. Pastor Miller's coming on up. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. I, am, I feel more equipped now uh, to engage with getting um, uh, the people that God has put me with. Uh, I'm going to just do some things that this needs you to put into your, your mind, and it rehearses back over what uh, Pastor Lee has said. Uh, we, we, we are together. One thing I, 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 that's remarkable about Pastor Lewis Pastor Lee and Pastor Collins is I think all, all of y'all are really Bible workers. I thought that was just me, but I think really they, they you know, they, they've done all these other great accolades, but they really in their heart, their objective is to uh, win and build the kingdom of God. Amen? Um, I want to rehearse back over with you over this about numbers uh, so that you can understand you have to be clear what these numbers mean. Uh, we talked about number one being 400 to 500 people. Number two is what we're talking about now. Getting a decision to come out to the crusade is goal number two. Amen? Uh, you are likely not to hit it if you did not go through goal number one. I'm not going to allow us to move from that because that's a burden to me that uh, uh, we put ourselves in a, in a, in a trap uh, as it relates to that. I uh, want to say to you, so we're at a point where we need to get 60 to 80 people out. Um, I, I have seen and I have heard of some who got 100 people out on opening night. Uh, one person or two people that did that. Amen? Uh, I've actually uh, gotten 50 people out without no transportation but with a van uh, performed a, a miracle was performed uh, I, I'm saying to us don't continue to judge ourselves with ourselves we continue to look at those who are around us uh, all, I did, all I need to know one of my secrets has been all I need to know if you did it then I can do it y'all missed that if I shake your hand and it's made out of metal, I may not can do it. But if I shake your hand and it's flesh, that means I, God can use me to repeat and do what you have done. That's all I need to know. If it's a machine, I may not can do it. But if it's man and what, what, what God gives us the strength to do. so. But oftentimes, we don't have those people around us that raise us to the next standard. And, and, and But we need to take from this meeting 
that it has been done. And that's what I want to get you to understand. The reason you go with the 50, this is, this is a numbers thing. Uh, again, when I talk about numbers, uh, it's, it's spared or spin in a certain way in the public church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, that, okay, you're here to get a whole lot of numbers. All you about is numbers. I've had other Bible workers say to other Bible workers, all your group is concerned about is winning numbers. And um, it, it, it makes it as if the number is evil. Um, and I want us to get past that point. Whenever I come to a city or you go to a city, it is your job to win as many people for Christ as you possibly can. Did you hear what I said? You are not there to go to win the smallest amount, which is one. Oh, I, oh I'm here. I'm in the city. I'm, I'm here. Uh, and it, each one reach one. I hate that term. Each one reach one. Listen, listen. No, I am not here to win one. I am here if God says the same to reach 80. Oh, somebody say don't let nobody put the number game on you. I am here to win. What sense does that make for me to come to here to do the least amount that I can do? But guess what? We sit there, and some of us in here have even said that. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Sometimes when you're not a part of it, and you're on the outside looking in, it looks like a number game. But it's not. I need to make it clear there's a reason for these numbers. The first number was to get the group, the net, the fish, 400 to 450 fish. And from that, each week, if you looked over your overall chart, it goes from 400, it goes down to 400 students, it goes down to 300 students the next week, it goes down to 200 students, it goes down to 100 students, that's on your list. You don't keep them 450 people. Every week, you lose some of them. I'm not interested, sir. Don't come back no more. Um, I'm, I, I, I already, I'm already in a church. One day, I wrote up all the excuses that I have ever received. It came to 152. Uh, I'm already with Jesus. Uh, uh, I'm not interested, which is, to me, the worst one. You don't even know what I have yet. So the bottom line is, is you're going to lose most of those fish that you have caught. Amen? You're going to get down to 75 to 80 that you will be trying to get to the crusade. That's where the number 75 or 50 to 80 comes from. It is the amount of people that's left on your list after you search for 450. This is what the problem is. When you don't get 450, you have to pull from a smaller list. Oh, y'all missed that. If you only get 200, that means when you pull from that to find out who's left, it's only 25. And that 25 is what you're going to be trying to get to a crusade. And, um... I have workers that we go two nights into the crusade and I look at them at workers meeting and they tell me their list is dead. Y'all don't know what that means. That means that out of the 25 people that I have coming, either they have came out or they're not coming. And it's only two nights into the crusade. Amen? That's why you have to have 50, 60, 70, 80 people because you need that group to pull from in order to come to your seminar. That is what the numbers say. Amen? Numbers that have been proven. And um, I will have to tell you this too. Uh, I think what God did, he says... You know what? I knew there would be a problem. So what I'm going to do, out of all my books of the Bible, 
I'm going to name one numbers. Out of all the books in the Bible, I'm going to name one of them the book of numbers. And I'm going to load it with numbers and reports. Just to drive. You know what? Many of you all who do a, day, a yearly reading, when you get to the book of numbers, you just hold your head down. It's the most miserable reading that you have to do in the Bible. But God says, I want that in there. I want you to know numbers are a part of the answer and not a part of the problem. Somebody say amen out here. It is clear that in reporting those who don't want to give a report, I have heard people say the 12 disciples didn't come together and say how many each one of them had. Listen, I don't know what you are. I don't know where you're going, but the human that I am needs a goal ahead of me. Amen? I need to aim for a goal. I'm trying to help us because these are the things that keep you, keep you progressing. Reporting shows where you are this year. Next year, it shows if you fell back a little bit or you improved. Amen? So that's why the book of Numbers has the numbers that kind of let us know where everything settled at. And God thought that it was important. Amen? So yes, when I go to a city, I'm trying to win every soul I can win. And I don't apologize for that. Amen? Uh... I think I said to you that um, I have a chip on my shoulder, and I'm going to have it on my shoulder for the rest of this year. <laughs> it's like it's not going to go nowhere. Amen? Uh, and this is the reason why. The Lord blessed me this year with 60 precious souls. I thought you wouldn't know to know that. And why I am so mad is that I do 20 different things. I'm just going to take it in. I preach. I pastor a church. I, I, I assist in a church. I do evangelism around the country. I do training around the country. I do Bible work around the country. I, and I can keep on. The list goes on. I, I take people to and fro to church. List, the list goes on and on and on. And if I can do that and still win 60 souls, I am disturbed that people that do that only could not start understanding that we need to reach to a higher plateau and stop looking and observing that which surrounds them, which is a lot of members that don't do nothing. Yeah, that's what we done got. That's what the mess is up. We're comparing ourselves with those who are around us. And God is saying, listen, <laughs> you shouldn't have been looking at them in the first place. I'm the example. Keep your eyes on me. I'm the greatest soul winner that ever lived. Amen? And I just want to say to us, it is your duty as a Bible instructor to be proficient and efficient at whatever you do. Uh, um, I have to tell this story. Uh, I play table tennis and I think I'm good and if you get on the other side of the table I plan to beat you I don't care if you're a girl I don't care if you're 7 feet tall I don't care if you are um, a midget if you get on the other side of that table with your paddle, you came to play. Amen? So I've gotten criticized because I put money into a paddle, 80 90 $100 into a ping pong paddle, where you can get four of them for $2, depending on where you go. <laughs> uh, and, I, and I got the equipment, and I got the balls and everything else. I said, what am I saying that for? proficient at what I do and don't get mad at me because you don't want to do the same thing amen and that's why I will continue to whoop up on your head on the other side you don't take your game up 
but you don't want me to take mine up. Not whatever I have to pay. How many hours I have to practice, I will do it to become more proficient. Elder Charles, I'm just trying to say that if this is what we do, let's go to every conference we can go to. Let's visit everything that will cause us to be sharper and sharper and sharper. That God can use us in 22 like he's never used us before. With Jesus as our representative, not man, not Pastor Miller, not this guy over here, not this girl over here, but what God can do through us. Um, when we get to the time that you have to roll 50 or 80, one of the things about me, I don't change so easily. I believe in the process. But many times I'm lost in the process. I have to be honest with you. If you get a whole lot of people that's acting bad or talking crazy, you begin to, to, to know where you are in the process. You will get up to the time that you are finna get ready to invite people and say, you know what, I don't feel good about my list. You know, you know I, 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 I'm struggling with the list. I'm struggling. Today is the day I'm supposed to ask everybody on this whole block or this whole area to come to the crusade. And I don't feel good about none of them at all. If you ain't done this in a while, you'll know what I'm talking about. You just don't feel good. You don't believe you built that relationship. Amen? But you know what the script says? The script says it's the day to invite them. And you know what I do? I invite them. No matter how I feel about it. No matter how good I feel about the relationship, learn to follow the script. Amen? So the script says this week I'm supposed to tell people to come to a meeting. Amen? I don't feel good, though. I don't, you know, you, sometimes you feel, oh, this person is, they, and, and giving you signs, and you know, okay, I like, oh, they, yeah, I don't feel good about this whole day. But the script says, it's time for you to invite them to the seminar. Somebody say amen. I'm helping somebody now. You don't know it, but I'm helping you. So I get, hey, how you doing, ma'am? Go through the canvas, uh, and hey, I'd like for you to come out. Uh, and be a part, and, and I'm, you know, so forth and so on. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, I'll be glad to come out. Amen. Well, I didn't think she was going to come. But I did what the script said. Amen. I'm lost in the process. Follow the script. Oh, I don't understand why we need to get 400 names. Follow the script. I don't know why you had to invite 60 to 70 people to the meeting, follow the script. I don't know why we have to do it on this week. I want to do it, I want to do it next week. Follow the script. You get lost in the process because people are different wherever you go. Amen. So I was right here locally. I had a lady in Bessemer, Alabama. And uh, knocked on the door. He said, what you want? I said, ma'am, I'm weird. Listen, I ain't got all day. Ma'am, um, I'm out giving out a community. Okay, hand it to me, but I can't be bothered. I'm not going to give you nothing, nothing back now. I said, but ma'am, you, you, you'll give it back to me next week. Okay, she said, okay, 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 I'm, I'm busy. Number one, I don't want to go back. I'm just telling you the truth. She was rude. I, I, I not, she was everything you could think of, that's what she was. But the script says go back. <laughs> I'm helping somebody now. I'm telling you. The script says go back. So I go back. The, the one through four is on a seat on the front porch. You know, what I did, before I knocked, I ran and opened it, and it was filled out. 
I got the 528 and put it in the door and I left. <laughs> You'll catch what I'm saying. Something says, don't you knock. Come back the next week. The lesson five to eight was in the door. She had to close it in the door. Open the door, pull it out, it's been finished. She's done it. I, I put her one through four back in that door jam with her next lesson and shut that door. I on down that, it was about a six week series. Down to week four, she comes through the door. She doesn't talk mean to me, but you can still tell she doesn't want to be bothered. And I'm looking through this woman through a screen. For two, three more weeks, I talk and communicate through this woman through a screen. So you have to understand, I don't think I made a friend with her. I don't think no kind of relationship is going on here. I don't think we are friends and what the script says, I gotta invite this woman to the seminar. But I'm lost in the process. Things are not going according to what the script says. But the script says, invite her. I invited this woman out through the screen and she said, I'll come. <laughs> I told her I'll be back next week, such and such a time, to pick her up. She says, okay. Not, still not chatty, chatty, you know. And I'm coming back. Do y'all realize something I, I've noticed? I don't even know what this woman looks like. I'm going to ask for such and such, but I really, if anybody else comes to the door, I'm going to take this. I don't know what she looks like. I never seen a woman, really maybe didn't try to see her because she turned me off. But I still followed the script. As tough as it was, that lady came out every single night to the Bessemer Seminar and was baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I, I learned in, it doesn't, all the rules we set up up here, all the things we talk about, the biggest thing is being a willing vessel. Did you hear what I said? One person told me, even a blind man, if he stays out long enough with his cup, at the end of the day, his cup will be full. And he can't see at all. What he gets, he gets blessed by being faithful. He is blessed by extending himself. He gets blessed by getting out from front, front of the TV set and winning no souls in front of Jeopardy. Yeah, that's what I need to tell you. Sometimes it means just putting yourself in a position where people can see you and you can see them. And that doesn't happen rarely in your home. Somebody say amen. Get out there. And I learned something. When I'm out, the people kind of make it that, that God sits up to me and says, hey, listen, what are you doing? What are you doing? And you explain to them, they're not in your route. They're not the next door. They may not even be in that complex. But God sends them to you. He's trying to let you know this person here is looking. Somebody say amen. You get that fruit from just being in the area. Amen? So, hearken as Pastor Sister Morton has said and Pastor Lee has said, hearken to your faithfulness of sticking to the number which is the script. Amen? You're going to always try to downplay it. Oh, it don't matter. It don't matter. I can do it. Can, okay. Here's the, here's the proverb. The proverb is when you do it your way, then we will hold you responsible. <laughs> when you do it the way that God has kind of proven to us over, over uh, decades, then we hold the responsibility. And you have to have the, the ability to have freedom. Yeah. 
It's something because you have natural gifts. But understand, sometimes when you don't have, you don't bring nothing to the table, you need to lean totally on the script. Sister Charles, you got that, didn't you? Listen, we got two minutes. Do we have any questions? Any questions? Okay. He's coming. He's coming. Go ahead. And a, and a comment. Um, like, after you get these souls and everything, for me, my experience been after I got baptized, you called me, Sister Anna called me, her husband, Charles, people were in the church, not only just to win souls and get a number, but after, I'm talking about the effect <laughs> after that you would continue. Once saved, always saved, no. You got to <laughs> continue to reiterate God's word, to visit them, the until God let you go, let them go. And then, you know, maybe, but that's what really important to me. It's not just winning, so we can do that. But after that, the compassion is about people, like mm -hmm. when you go out to different states and everything, are there a group of people that know, mm -hmm. already know, hey, let's get these people named, mm -hmm. let me contact them, mm -hmm. or the church teaching that, to, okay. uh, got a, a group of people that's going out and doing that. Right. Like, I didn't have to tell you and Sister Anna to call me mm -hmm. and another few um, deacons that right. Catholic right. called me because right. 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 I was baptized. And right. that, that made me feel so good. That when I missed church, they were like, where you at? Where you at? I didn't know they noticed me. Right, right, right. Thank you, yeah. thank you. That's a good comment. Listen, let me just say that before anyone else gets up. So that you will know, we know that there's three points to evangelism. One is the pre-work. One is the meeting itself, and one is follow-up. What we chose to do is to highlight pre-work in this session. We're not, and we're not downgrading keeping people now. But, but, let me, but I got to tell you this. Before you can keep them, you got to get them. Amen. Now, once you get them, that's why we have to do another one of these. And when we do another one, we will not emphasize as much pre-work. We'll go to the meeting and keeping people. That'll be our next one. So y'all stay tuned for the second edition. Amen? Okay. Uh, anybody else? Real quick. Real quick here. Jerry Lewis. Got a question now. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, one of the things that I like to do is I like to get people to invite their family and friends. You know, it helps build up not only your list. People don't like to come to anything where they don't like to come by themselves. They don't know anybody in the church. But I encourage them to bring a family member or a friend or something, and help build up your list as well. Okay, you, you, is that a question or a comment? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, you won't do right. Go ahead, go ahead. I just want to ask, is a copy of what's being programmed going to be available in a DVD or any kind of form? Uh, because you got a lot of rich stuff coming through here. Right, well. right, right. right. We'll, we, we'll, we'll definitely get back with you on that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We, we um, uh, the, the great thing, that so you'll know, because this is on YouTube Live, you can rehearse it back in, at any point at any time, I think, after this is done. Is that right? Ta okay, right. So that's the good thing. Everything we said and done, it will be so that you can go back to YouTube and revisit it. Okay? So that's good. Amen. Amen. One last question. Anybody? Who's got that last question for this session before we get ready to go to lunch? Oh, I shouldn't have said lunch because that's, that, that's the end of the questions when I said that. Sister Bowles, you got a question? Dr. Bowles back there, you got a question? Okay. This is one of our pastoral leaders in the area. We are so glad. Not only is he a preacher, he a Bible worker too. That's why he's here along with his wife. Uh, we thank God for them. All right. Okay. Okay. I guess that does it then. Let's go ahead and have prayer uh, as we move toward going downstairs and having a, a, a lunch. Those who own on virtual uh we'll be back on at uh, at our certain at one o'clock at one o'clock so that you can tune back in go get you go get you a biscuit or something to eat and then you, we can come back at one let us pray dear kind of heavenly father lord we're so thankful for what you have done thank you lord for what we've accomplished so far and also bless the food that we're about to receive for, our, for the nourishment of our body help us for christ's sake amen god bless you you to do that. God bless you.